So, I'll try to show you today something from the speedy perspective. And I'm trying to analyze ANSO Europe teleconnections with an intermediate complexity model, which is developed here by Franco Molteni and his group. And I've been using it for a certain time and with the help of my collaborators. So my special thanks are going to Cedo Brankovic, Martin, Fred, Bianca, and Paolo. They helped me a lot to um, analyze this topic. So when I have started with uh, ENSO impact on North uh, Atlantic European region, we didn't know as much as we know now about uh, ENSO impact on Europe. We know that El Nino Southern Oscillation is a strong generator of uh, climate variability all over the world, but it, there is a quite clear impact on North America. But uh, ENSO impact on North Atlantic European region is not an easy task. We know that over the North Atlantic sector there is a large internal variability of the atmosphere and that complicates uh, our, our investigation. Uh, and also we know that uh, Europe is influenced by other phenomena as North Atlantic Oscillation, which is much stronger uh, over that part of the world. And there is also interactions with regional seasonal cycle, with chaotic properties, and there are a lot of feedbacks. So um, uh, to analyze ENSO signal over the Europe, it's really complicated sometimes. If you try to um, Google ENSO impact on the world, you will probably find some figures like this. So you may recognize that ENSO impact uh, depends on the um, polarity of ENSO phase. So we have different impact during the El Nino or warm or during La Nina or cold phase. But there is also a um, difference between seasons. So winter season uh, is quite different than the uh, summer season. But you can recognize here that there is a quite strong and clear impact over the North, North America and South America, Australia, uh, Africa. And during La Nina, which is the opposite phase of El Nino, we have almost the opposite impact of Anson. But what I'm concerned about is that uh, there is no clear impact over the Europe. We know that El Nino and La Nina's um, impact is associated with uh, changes in the, uh, uh, jets, which brings the warm or um, uh, moist air over the continent. But over the Europe, there is no signal on these maps. So I'm wondering if there is any impact of ENSO on Europe. I think that ENSO does have an impact on Europe. If that's not true, then it could be quite embarrassing for me because I claimed a lot of time in my papers that there is uh, a certain impact of ENSO on Europe. But recently, uh, Met Office put this, uh, these figures on their website and you can see that there, that there is um, signed impact on this part of Europe during El Nino and La Nina events uh, with wetter conditions associated with El Nino and uh, drier conditions or, uh, associated with La Nina. So I hope or I am flattering myself that uh, our papers contributed at least a little bit to this figure. But if you look at the um, temperature impact, then the impact, ENSO impact on Europe is not so clear. So you can find that there is a dipole response over the Europe in temperature, uh, but only when strong events are not included in analysis. Sometimes for La Nina temperature impact, the, the signal is very weak, so we don't have any significant anomalies here. If you look at the local impact of ENSO, uh, here on this figure you may see the temperature, uh, temperature anomalies uh, averaged over the northern part of Croatia for two La Ninas. These two La Ninas are almost of the same amplitude, but the first year is associated with extremely warm uh, events, uh, extremely warm conditions over the northern part of, Euro of Croatia, and the second one is associated with extremely cold. So results are sometimes controversial. 
on regional and on local scale. When all things have started, this is the one of the famous uh, results uh, made by Frederick and Miller, and they found on, in observations that uh, El Nino situations are more connected to cyclonic type of weather over the Europe, while La Nina is associated with more anticyclonic type of weather. So there are many observational and modeling studies that showed that there is a detectable ENSO signal over the Europe, uh, but it is seasonal dependent uh, and they mostly investigated uh, winter season because we know that there is a stronger, uh, strongest ENSO in Pacific. And um, there is also possibility of flagged or time delayed ENSO impact on Europe, which means that we need to have some slower component of climate system involved, uh, which can memorize the, the ENSO anomalies. So, what is the physical mechanism and uh, uh, from the observed and modeling point of view? We know that propagation of Rossby waves from a region of tropical connection in uh, Pacific toward the extra tropics uh, can explain that tropospheric pathway um, of that signal. But there is also some stratospheric link, which means that stratosphere is also sensitive to ENSO forcing and it can contribute to that link from the, the tropical Pacific to the uh, Europe. But from the modeling point of view, um, we see that uh, there is some, some uh, investigations have showed that we need the model, models with uh, high resolution to obtain um, uh, good enough ENSO signal over the Europe. But on the other hand, uh, some of them showed that we need uh, models with uh, with fully resolved stratosphere to get that stratospheric link between tropical Pacific and uh, Europe. But what we did, uh, we tried to model and so impact on Europe with SPEEDY. SPEEDY is ICTP AGCM. It is quite simple model of, or it is an intermediate complexity of model with quite coarse horizontal and vertical revolution, resolution. It has only eight layers in uh, vertical, which means that only two of them could be named as stratosphere because the upper layer, upper layer is at 30 hectopascals. But what we show that speed is quite successful used in many of uh, investigations f from uh, dynamic, uh, from climate dynamics. And uh, it seems that Speedy is uh, capable to reproduce ENSO impact on Europe as well. So now I will try to explain you uh, how we made our uh, experiments and why we did it in a certain way. So we started with uh, ENSO forcing of European climate, uh, investigated with uh, quite long Speedy simulations. So we produced um, we produced 35 member ensemble of very long uh, integrations. And after that, we divided uh, uh, that period in, uh, in and so El Nino and La Nina years according to Nino 3.4 uh, index. And uh, in tropical Pacific, you may see that there is uh, an average uh, winter time La Nina with amplitude of minus 1.6. And wintertime El Nino is here with amplitude of two uh, degrees. If you look at the speedy precipitation response in tropical Pacific, you may see that in spite of the fact that the amplitude of the forcing for cold and warm uh, ENSO phase was similar, the response is not the same, which means that here the La Nina, the La Nina response is uh, two times smaller than the response for El Nino. And precipitation maxima is shifted a little bit westward relative to the maxima of SSTs. But what's going on on a global scale? Here you can see the response in geopotential high uh, at 200 hectopascals. And you may see composites for La Nina and La Nino. And you see here that there is a quite strong response over the Pacific and North America, which uh, uh, project, projects under the PNA pattern. 
Uh, El Nino response is quite linear, which means it is placed over the almost the same uh, place, but it is stronger. And there is also a precipitation uh, response, which is uh, in line with that geopotential high anomalies. If you look at the Europe, there is a quite weak signal here, but it is still here. If you look more closely to the Europe, you may see that uh, response in mean sea level pressure is stronger for El Nino than for La Nina, but it is spatially linear. It is placed over the same uh, position. And during La Nina, precipitation anomalies are a little bit weaker in La Nina, but you may recognize here during, the, during, the, uh, during El Nino events that precipitation is increased over the southern Europe and decreased over the northern part of Europe. So, uh, after that, we were worrying about uh, influence of other oceans than tropical Pacific. We know that uh, Atlantic is uh, more closer to Europe and that may have some impact. That's why we made another experiment and this is experiment with, which is called TROPAC because uh, we used the SST anomalies constrained to tropical Pacific. So in control experiment we have prescribed SST anomalies globally and in TROPAC uh, experiment SST anomalies are constrained only to tropical Pacific. If we look now at the response over the Europe, you may see that for both La Nina and El Nino, the TROPAC experiment gives really similar results as that control experiment, and which is confirmed with spatial correlations which are quite high and uh, statistically significant. Which means that these results which, which we obtained in control experiments we can believe that it really comes from the tropical Pacific. So that influence of the other, uh, other oceans is not so important in that simulation. So we can summarize that ENSOC has a detectable and statistically significant impact on North Atlantic European region, which has been confirmed by observational studies and with uh, this uh, modeling point of view with and an, with uh, an model of intermediate complexity. So we can remember that El Nino uh, impact during the winter is associated with more cyclonic type of weather uh, over the Europe and with anticyclonic type of weather during La Nina events. Now we would like to know what could happen in a warmer climate. So speed is obviously capable to reproduce an ENSO response over the Europe, but uh, in warmer climate, we designed a um, double CO2 experiment, and uh, we put the CO2 uh, at double uh, values. We uh, took the SST climatology and sea ice from a global <coughs> coupled model, and SST anomalies were the same as in control experiment, which means that interannual variability of SSTs are the same, but the but SST and sea ice climatology are shifted according to double CO2 concentration. So here you may see that there is um, there is of course a warmer uh, sea surface in uh, that. Uh, uh, experiment and sea ice is decreased over the polar regions. So what are the results? Here you may see the, the difference between the uh, double CO2 and the control uh, run and there is increase in mean sea level pressure over that part of Europe and decrease over the southern part which is also uh, may be seen in precipitation. So in, f in this experiment, uh, in warmer climate, it seems that uh, precipitation over the southern part of Europe will be decreased, which is in quite good accordance with the, with the results performed with, uh, with the model, with the coupled model of higher resolution. So it's really similar. Maybe some amplitudes are not the same, but the pattern is quite similar for uh, both models which confirmed us that speed is doing quite good job uh, in warmer climate. But what is with ENSO impact in warmer climate? 
here you may see that the precipitation uh, for cold and for warm composites in control experiment and in the warmer climate. So you may see that we can expect, expect at least from the speedest perspective, that there will be some increase in uh, precipitation signal over that part of the Atlantic. But I may uh, express here that the signal is much stronger over the North Atlantic than over the continent. So uh, why is that? If we look at the zonal wind and two, at 200 hectopascals, you may recognize here that the zonal wind over the North Atlantic is increased over this part compared to the control simulation, which means that during the El Nino, uh, the, um, we have more, uh, the, the stronger winds means that we have a stronger advection of a warmer and uh, moisture area, uh, area over the continent, which will produce uh, more abundant pre precipitation there. So we can conclude now that SPEDIC has shown that there is an influence of ENSO on North Atlantic European region from winter season to winter time uh, climate over the Europe. So now we would like to show if there is possibility that ENSO has also and delayed impact on European climate, which means that is it possible that wintertime ENSO somehow could be memorized in the, some part of the climate system and survive until the next spring. We know that for that we need some slower component of climate system because atmosphere reacts very quickly to some forcing, but it also the memory of atmosphere is up to one month. So we cannot expect that ENSO signals survive only in atmosphere for uh, one season or for three months. For that experiment, uh, we performed uh, the experiment with forcing in uh, tropical Pacific to have an ENSO forcing, but we also used the possibility of SPEEDY to activate slab mixed ocean layer in North Atlantic. So, in that way, we allowed, uh, we, we allowed uh, air-sea interaction in the North Atlantic. Here you may see the correlation between principal component on first, of first EOF mode of MJ precipitation, which is spring precipitation over the Europe, and JFM SST anomalies. And you may see that uh, variability of spring precipitation in Europe is correlated, is, pos is positively and significantly correlated with SSTs in, um, in tropical Pacific, which indicated us that tropical Pacific may be a source of, uh, of variability uh, for the spring precipitation over the Europe as well. If you look now at the other correlations, you may see that there is also correlation between winter time uh, SSTs uh, in uh, North Pacific and spring time SSTs in North Atlantic. And here is a dipole pattern produced, which means that during the positive ENSO, we have this kind of uh, SST pattern in the North Atlantic. It is also, uh, NINO 3.4 index is correlated to with mean sea level pressure over that area and of course with this uh, zonal wind. Now we may say now that this pattern, SST pattern, is, uh, it serves as a link between the wintertime and, so, and springtime European climate in that way that this SST pattern survived until the next spring uh, and then produces the anomalies in sea level pressure and also in zonal wind. Increased zonal wind in this area means increased uh, advection of moisture over the continent, which produces the, the, the increased precipitation over the continent in spring. So now if we compare the model, the, 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 the results from the speedy and uh, from the observed, uh, composites, 
you may see that mean sea level pressure uh, obtained El, uh, in El Nino and, in, uh, and for speed and for uh, hardly mean sea level pressure are quite similar. The same is true for La Nina events. So speedy produces quite similar results uh, to the observed uh, mean sea level pressure pattern during the spring. These composites are based on winter time ENSO index, which means that we categorized the years according to winter time ENSO index, but looked at the spring time response. Um, so now we can conclude that at least based on speedy simulations, springtime climate over the Europe is influenced by ENSO as delayed ENSO influence, which means that wintertime ENSO produces some uh, AMJ uh, anomalies over the Europe. But there is also um, contemporaneous ENSO influence, which means that springtime ENSO in tropical Pacific may force springtime uh, climate over the Europe as well. To distinguish these two impacts, we performed another two experiments. The first one is the mixed winter ENSO experiment. In this experiment, we prescribed SST forcing in tropical Pacific only during the winter, allowing that winter time ENSO forcing. And we also activated mixed layer in North Atlantic. And the other experiment is mixed summer ENSO experiment, where we where we uh, allowed SST, tropic, SST forcing in tropical Pacific only during the summer, so which means only during the spring to summer, which means that there is no chance that we have delayed and so impact on, on uh, spring or summer. Now, if, if we look at the composites for these two experiments, for summer SST, forcing in tropical Pacific, we obtained this response in precipitation. But when we have winter SST, the response is quite different. So the precipitation is increased over the Europe uh, when we have uh, wintertime SSTs uh, in tropical Pacific. If we now look at the contour experiment, we see that in contour experiment, we have continuous SST forcing in both winter and, and summer. The, there is also the continuous response over the European continent. Uh, in contrast to this one, where there is a negative anomalies between positive. If we look at the crew precipitation, which are more or less observed precipitation over the, over the continental part of Europe, you may see that this, uh, result for uh, wintertime SST forcing in tropical Pacific is more similar to that for crew data, which means if we have SST uh, anomalies in, during the winter in tropical Pacific, which means that we allow ENSO forcing during the, the winter, that we obtain more realistic uh, response. So it is that delayed uh, ENSO impact from wintertime to the spring time is, uh, is really important. So uh, at the beginning of this talk, I told you that some studies have showed that we need uh, result stratosphere to, to obtain a realistic ENSO impact on Europe. So what is going on in the stratosphere in SPEEDY? We know that SPEEDY has really crude representation of stratosphere with only two layers of, uh, in the model. But if we looked at the temperature response um, for El Nino minus La, minus La Nina composites, you may recognize that during the, the, the winter there is a warming in polar stratosphere over the northern hemisphere, which is in line with other results uh, observed as well as uh, modeling results. In the same time, you may see that there is a northern annular mode response in uh, zonal wind over the northern hemisphere, which is, so it, which is accompanied with, um, with uh, warming in polar uh, stratosphere. So it seems, that, uh, it seems that speedy in stratosphere is quite consistent with some other models and with uh, the observations. Um, after that, we performed some idealized ENSO forcing with daily data. 
uh, to analyze uh, to analyze persistence of ENSO signal in both in stratosphere and uh, at the surface. So here you may see some uh, results for temperature index, which is average temperature over that uh, polar cap. And there is also some uh, zonal wind index, which measures the strength of the uh, zonal wind anomalies. And here we may see that, uh, that uh, ENSO signal is quite persistent in stratosphere. And it is also persistent in zonal wind. And although the forcing was prescribed in that way that it is constant in January and February, the signal is still here during the March. And we showed also that, uh, that uh, based on, heat f uh, on calculated heat flux, that there is increasing incoming heat flux which uh, precedes the strongest polar warming which makes the, the, that heat flux is responsible uh, for that uh, polar war stratospheric polar warming in speedy. So this is heat flux into the polar at 100 hectares. And 100 hectares. Into the originally into the polar cap. Yes. So uh, now we have also the vertical, uh, vertical cross sections for results with no slab ocean layer and with slab ocean layer in North Atlantic. In previous slides, I show you that we detected North Atlantic as an uh, important link uh, between uh, tropical Pacific in winter and uh, uh, North Atlantic European climate in spring. So here you may see that if there is no ENSO, uh, if there is ENSO forcing during the winter, but with no slab ocean layer, we have response both in stratosphere and in the lower part of troposphere. But if we have activated slab ocean layer in North Atlantic, this signal is, uh, lasts for a longer time and survives until the, even the May. It may be also uh, seen here in zonal wind index. So for the Winter, winter, ta winter time ENSO impact on springtime European climate, it's uh, important to have active uh, North, Atlantic, um, North Atlantic. So in one, uh, in partly this delayed response is uh, up to the uh, persistence uh, of the signal in stratosphere, but also the North Atlantic is that link which allows uh, delayed ENSO impact on European climate. So now we can see how does an ENSO impact looks like from the speedest perspective. So we know that during the winter there is a tropical Pacific SST anomalies, which uh, of course has an impact on tropical, uh, on tropical atmosphere, producing uh, Rossby waves and also through the stratospheric link uh, the, the signal comes to the mid-latitude atmosphere over the, the Europe with a uh, cyclonic type of weather connected to, the, to, to ENSO events. And uh, this, through the air-sea interaction, there is some North Atlantic SST anomalies which is uh, connected with tropical uh, Pacific through the atmospheric bridge, which is called after the Lao and Nat. And uh, after that, due to sea air interaction in uh, that North Atlantic uh, area, there is also mid latitude atmospheric response in uh, springtime. And thank you.